the Sumatran tiger. Remarkable, extraordinary, and fundamental to the continued health and preservation of the rainforests on Sumatra, the third largest island in the vast archipelago of Indonesia. Here, amidst this bastion of biodiversity, survival is a constant struggle. And without immediate and drastic intervention, this majestic creature may disappear forever. The Sumatran tiger, an emblem of power and resilience, may soon come to symbolize our failure to manage the environment in a sustainable way. Experts estimate only 400 to 500 tigers still remain in the rainforests of Sumatra, the only island in Indonesia which still retains a wild tiger population. Sister islands, Bali and Java, at one time hosted their own lineages. Both the Javan and Bali tigers are long gone, for reasons which began long ago. In the late 1800s, English imperialists hunted Bengal tigers for sport in what was then known as British India. Dutch colonial counterparts in the neighbouring East Indies, Indonesia as it's known today, soon followed suit, hunting the tigers of Sumatra, Bali and Java. During this era, beyond being big game, tigers were perceived as pests often being poisoned by plantation workers. In some cases, the setting of snares for hunting deer and wild boar would inadvertently trap tigers. Injured and helpless, the tigers would die a slow, prolonged and painful death. In proximity to people and desperate to survive, Tigers would devour livestock, and sometimes human beings. Inversely, the predator becoming the prey was all too common. Retribution for occasional attacks on people and livestock resulted in the ruthless slaughtering of many innocent tigers. The turn of the century in Indonesia brought with it human population growth rapid industrialization and economic development on a massive scale, resulting in the last of the Bali tigers meeting their demise in the 1940s. Less than 50 years later, the Javan tigers would suffer the exact same fate for the exact same reasons. By 1983, both the Bali and Javan tiger species had completely vanished, never to be seen again. A short time later, Indonesia would undergo political reform, shifting to a new government, with a new vision, inspired and motivated to transform both the political and environmental landscape. A landscape which, luckily, still supported a small Sumatran tiger population. Unlike its sister species of Java and Bali, the Sumatran tiger had managed to persevere. The sheer size of Sumatra in comparison to Java or Bali is presumably the Sumatran tiger's only advantage, allowing the Sumatran tiger to live in relative isolation away from civilization. But no longer. Today, people are probing deep into the forests in pursuit of tiger trophies. However, gone are the days of hunting for sport. Now, it's for profit. 
an estimated 78% of Sumatran tigers killed are sold on the black market. Literally every part of a poached tiger is valuable. Hides become decadent interior accessories sold as carpets and wall coverings. Everything else, from the tiger's paws to its jaws, has a prescribed benefit according to Chinese medicine and folklore. Potions brewed from a tiger's boiled eyeballs or derivatives made from ground-up tiger bones are believed to cure everything from the common cold to cancer. To combat this problem, the Indonesian government enacted new conservation legislation in 1990, which increased police presence in Sumatran tiger habitats and stiffened poaching penalties. Soon after, Indonesia joined 10 other countries to form the Global Tiger Forum, a collaboration of nations working together to enhance international law enforcement and customs to eliminate the tiger trade. Over time, these measures will greatly impact the poaching problem. Solving the other major dilemma facing the Sumatran tiger, protection and propagation of existing wild Sumatran tiger populations, requires a different, more radical approach. One which the Indonesian government would set in motion by utilizing the resources, expertise and influence of the private sector. Rising to the occasion, an unlikely ally, the world's third largest pulp and paper producer, APP, Asia Pulp and Paper. Partnering with APP in this groundbreaking stakeholder collaboration, one of the first of its kind was the Indonesian Ministry of Forestry, the Natural Resources Conservation Agency of South Sumatra, Baker SDR, Sembilang National Park, the Sumatran Tiger Conservation Foundation, and the Indonesian Safari Park. The objective? To rescue, rehabilitate, relocate and release Putri, meaning princess in the Indonesian language. Putri is one of many Sumatran tigers involved in conflict, a term which is used to identify tigers or other species that are living too close to human populations. Conflict poses a threat to both the people living and working in the area and the tigers. The Tiger Release Program has been created to address the issue. Seven-year-old Putri was spotted roaming around here in early 2011. Seeing it now, it is hard to believe that this healthy plantation forest at one time resembled the surface of the moon. One of APP's suppliers rehabilitated this section of the Sumatran jungle transforming it into a healthy plantation forest, which doubles as alternative tiger territory, enabling a safe passageway for the felines between adjacent naturally forested areas. Despite having a healthy habitat, plentiful food supply, shade and clean water, Putri wandered outside the jungle and into a nearby village, Concern over previous and future tiger-human conflicts and the potential poaching of Putri was motivation for her relocation. After being safely rescued by local NGO, the Sumatran Tiger Conservation Foundation, and veterinary staff from the Indonesian Safari Park, another private company and contributor gave Putri a comprehensive health checkup to ensure this princess was prepared for the journey to her new kingdom. In the future, tigers like Putri will be relocated to Sumatra's Rio province and find suitable homes within conservation areas, like the 178,000 hectare UNESCO approved Giamsiak Kachil, Bukit Batu Man and Biosphere Reserve. In addition, Diamond Raya and APP jointly created 110,000 hectare Sinopis Tiger Sanctuary. Both healthy forested areas buffered and protected by plantation forests. For now, with consideration for natural tiger population distribution, Putri will be released into the 200,000 hectare plus Sembilang National Park in the province of Sumatra Selatan in South Sumatra. The park provides Putri with a huge habitat to roam free, without concern over conflict. For continued monitoring of her health, safety and whereabouts, 
Putri is fitted with a GPS tracking device. Ini adalah GPS-nya, ini adalah baterainya. Upon Putri's auspicious arrival, all involved, joined by members of the media, stood at a safe distance, anxiously waiting for Putri to leave her cage. And away she goes to explore her new home and begin a new life. Putri's relocation is just one example of ongoing and continued collaborative conservation initiatives. The Indonesian government, along with APP and contributing partners, are actively campaigning in the hopes of co-opting collaboration from all sectors. These efforts do work, but continued support is imperative. The future of the Sumatran tiger and other endangered big mammals of Sumatra is in our hands.